It's over. Is the sky falling? What the hell is happening? Jake, it's all coming to an end. Take all of your magic cards, put them on eBay, put them on TCG Player, take them to your local game store. I don't care. Walk to the top of a mountain and shout the names of the cards and the prices you're selling them for. Get rid of them all because the bubble is about to burst. It's a buying frenzy right now as reserveless staples, extended art, EDH staples, sealed product, everything is spiking. We're gonna give you our thoughts today. We're talking about the reserve list. We're talking about MTG finance. The video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello, and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We've got a lot of reserve list stuff to talk about. A lot of prices are skyrocketing, and no one really seems to be able to put their finger on why. But before we get into it, if you would, go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. It's the best way to support the channel with just the click of a button. As Joel said, we're talking about reserve lists, but we're not just talking about reserve lists. We're going to talk about extended art cards. We're going to talk about some observations that we've had about sealed product that started to spike. And at the end, we are going to make a call on what we think you should be doing right now in response to all of this, just our opinion on it. Oh man, we're, we're sharing an opinion today, which means... Whew, it's going to be crazy. Get that dislike button ready. At the beginning of COVID, you have a lot of people that thought, I'm going to be needing to go out, buy toilet paper, and the exact opposite happened, which is you have, you know, you're able to go out and get toilet paper. You're able to get paper towels, but you have a lot of people that are staying home. You have a lot of people that have uh, stimulus money. You have people that are working and then also collecting stimulus money. And so you have people with a lot of expendable income who haven't been affected by coronavirus as much as other people. And those people are putting money into collectibles. So flash forward a couple days ago, everybody is sharing their wheel of fortune in Discord. And I decided to check the price on these cards. And what I saw was actually astounding. The $80 wheel of fortune that I bought unlimited that is just heavily played the lowest you can find a card of that condition on ebay right now it's like seven or eight hundred dollars and so i was like this is just absurd like this is almost a, a thousand percent gain on this card since i bought it in 2017. let's go ahead and just look at the price of some of these cards um that we're talking about today yeah, so you can see right here. I mean, we're starting, I guess, on Jeweled. Or which one do you want yeah, to start with? Yeah, no, let's start on Jeweled Lotus Extended Art. Like, this came out just a couple months ago with Commander Legends. Clearly, it's the crown jewel of the set. The card came out, it was around like three to four hundred dollars and now you can see a huge jump in price. I don't know. How do you hold a card like this, for example, that isn't reserve list and not just lock in the gains here? You can definitely find a different jeweled lotus for a much more reasonable price to slot into your deck this seems absurd to me i don't want anything right. to do with this i don't understand i mean at this point the collector booster boxes for this are going up simply based on like the ability to pull this one card but you can i mean it's driving the price of other singles down you had a lot of people that were like no jeweled lotus is going to 20 dollars uh, I would love for you to link me the $20 Jeweled Lotuses. Have you seen any on eBay, Joel? A lot of people said that this card was bad and it wasn't going to make it into a lot of decks. No, it doesn't MTG line up. Jeweled Lotus, no. I, I mean, I've I've still been hunting foil ones, but I mean, the, the non-foils are sitting 60 to 80 bucks and the foil regular border is sitting, you know, 90, really more like 100, 120 at this point. It, I mean, I've... I've bought one, uh, two foils at this point, one for 95 and one for 87. Um, mm -hmm. And that's mostly from going through and making offers on ones that people have best offer available for. You know, it's it's not a card that's going down anytime soon. But right now, the boom is everybody's buying. Everybody's buying. Everybody's buying. Lots of so buying right now. I don't Lots really of know buying. what to make of it. It was brought up in MTG Finance that... Uh, international players, uh, Japanese players, there have been increased interest in competitive EDH. And so you have more and more of these reserve list cards getting bought up. There's been this big talk of like 
a huge increase in counterfeits that are likely going to come because of these these spikes in these cards as someone who's been collecting for a long time a lot of these cards are going to undergo harsh scrutiny before anybody purchases them so those counterfeits are going to have to be damn near perfect if you want anybody to touch them with a 10-foot pole and a lot of people need references if you're trying to sell these cards which also kind of kind of brings us to the point that is a lot of these cards if you're buying at these super high prices and you're expecting to sell them back at these same high prices that you bought them at or sell them for a, even a higher price don't expect that trend to last forever right now i would not buy into any of this stuff i don't see how this wave can just continue to go up and up and up i mean these cards how often do you really think a minimum 730 dollar card is going to change hands how much higher do you think that's going to go up if you are buying these right now if you do have the expendable income to spend on this kind of uh, this kind of card you need to be planning to hold it for years this isn't buy and flip and and you know oh my god it it went up another thousand dollars in six months and i agree with you and i will say this i do think that it's not just people that are looking to buy and flip these that are buying them but I will say that I do think there are frugal investors or people that did have Bitcoin or, or money in other investments that have liquidated some of those earnings to legitimately buy cards for their collection, for their decks that they have no intention of selling. So I do think that there is a certain amount of this huge jump in price that is that. But there are people that are jumping on the boat right now who don't know much about the boat that are going, all right, I'm just gonna grab a, an ore and row and go. I think you can buy into a Lion's Eye Diamond if you're saying, you know, this is a card that I'm gonna play for a long time. I'm gonna keep this card. I'm gonna pass this card on to my kids. This card's going with me to the grave, whatever. But if you're buying a Lion's Eye Diamond with the intention of just like flipping it in the short term for even more cash, or you're expecting it like, oh, it's reserve list. That's if I buy reserve. in right now at $500, it's gonna go to a thousand dollars. I just don't know if I see it. I mean, this is the kind of thing right here that drives interest. This is the kind of thing that is happening. It's the same thing that happened with Logan Paul chasing Charizards. Yep. And it's happening now with the biggest card in our game where, oh my gosh, it's $310,000. I've talked to people that are just like sort of outskirts interested and they've heard of MTG Finance and you know, they wanna, dm us on twitter and be like hey i've heard y'all watched your video i saw this what would you recommend me buy and i'm like um nothing don't yeah. do that do you want to play or do you want to like buy for investment because right now it's going crazy collectibles are going absolutely nuts it's not just magic it is not, it's just, not magic. just magic it is no it is I mean, sneakers it is pokemon it is like baseball cards basketball right. cards i went in to just buy sleeves at the card shop the other day and it is just packed to the brim with people just buying baseball cards and basketball cards and trading sports cards i wanted to show you this jake 2012 i graduated away from school and and left y'all uh 2011 and in 2012, this card was at 14 bucks. I wanted to double check that it was under a $20 card at a certain time because I think our buddy painted on one of these and made a proxy out of it. Yeah, uh, I have it. Not a proxy, but an altar. You have the altar. I the have it. Gilded I Drake bought it altar. from him. I did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so now, you know, this... I don't think that anybody would buy a $350 card. And Bro, I love <laughs> the on. flavor text on this card. Like given the current economic situation around yeah. these magic cards like Fire it boy. literally says it on it like imagine buying a gilded drake at 350 and then it ended, ends up like stabilizing around like 125 or something like that i think a lot more people are collectors and flippers right now speaking of which let's flip back over to the other and so with a lot more collectors and flippers entering the game you just sort of have to let this stuff play out honestly if you want to play with these really expensive cards you should probably just proxy them right now uh, or maybe forever uh, there's a lot of the cedh crowd and the whole cdh community is like um proxy the cards proxy the cards we don't yeah. care we would rather you have, you play you have with the gold border stuff. guys cradle that's just going to the moon as well like right, right behind the real like yeah that's a workaround the gold border cards have been a workaround for people until a recently copy that's kind of playable but right kind of that, sanctioned it yeah. got caught on 
and now those are all sold out. Could Wheel of Fortune continue going up in price? Absolutely it could. But am I going to kick myself for selling a card for $700 that I bought for 83 years ago. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button on your way out. And just imagine if Wizards of the Coast reprinted Gilded Drake and just said something like, as long as you have two or more opponents.